And uh, we're going to look at deceptive play this evening. And there's probably not much as um, satisfying in bridge as a deceptive play, like not cheating, but playing in such a way that you mislead the opponents or get them to choose the wrong option. And we're going to look at some examples of, of that. So let's have a look at this hand to start with, where South is playing in three, no trump. You overcalled one spade here. Um, and let's suppose you decide to lead a spade. You might have second thoughts about leading a spade because of that three, no trump bid. But let's suppose you bid a, lead a spade anyway. And down comes dummy. And they play the nine from dummy. Your partner plays the jack. And declarer wins this trick with the king. And I've got the first poll coming up now, which is from your point of view as West, can you tell who has the queen of spades? Is it east? Is it south? Or can't you tell? So have a little think about that. And in a moment, I'm going to launch a poll with those three options. Who has the queen of spades? I'm going to end the poll there. And a very interesting uh, result here, because it's a very even tied result between the South, can't tell, and East. And only one of those answers is right. Well, let's think about it. Um, one possibility is that your partner had the uh, Jack and the Queen, in which case they, as third hand, would have played the Jack. Um, so it is possible that your partner has the Jack uh, and that started with the Jack and the Queen and that Declarer's only stopper was the King and that they've played it. Um, or there's another possibility that your partner just had the jack and that declarer had the king and the queen. And in that case, declarer is under no obligation to play the queen. They can play the king or the queen, whichever they think might uh, confuse you. So the correct answer to that poll is you can't tell. You cannot tell who has the queen of spades here. Do interrupt me if you um, have a question about that, but the correct answer is you can't tell, which um, most of you did not get right. Let's look at this one now. And this sorry, time you- this uh, Tony, time I... sorry, can I ask something? Yeah. Uh, your partner is supposed to uh, respond with the highest card. So if he's holding a queen, then shouldn't he put the queen there? No. Third hand plays as high as necessary. So they play the bottom of any touching honours. Oh, I see. So if they had the queen and the jack, they should play the jack. Okay? Oh, I get it. It's a mistake okay. to play the queen if you have the jack. Okay. Thank so you. Let's, let's have a look at this one. Um, and this time, again, you lead the seven. This time, again, your partner plays the jack. Um, and here, declarer wins a trick with the queen. And this time, the question for you is who has the king of spades? Is it east? Is it south? Or can't you tell? Have a think about it. And I'm going to launch a poll asking you who has the king of spades? So have a look at the results. And this time, 85% uh, have gone for South, 15% went for Can't Tell, and no one said East. Well, this time, yes, the majority of you are right here. If your partner has, in addition to the Jack that you've already seen, had the King as well, they should have played the King. They should have played third hand high. The only time if they had the king and the jack that they would not play the king would be if the queen were in dummy, but that's not the case here. So, yes, you are right, the 80-something percent of you who said that um, the king must be in the south hand here. If your partner is playing correctly, they should have played the king if they had it. Therefore, uh, 
declarer here has played the uh, when they play the queen, they are really um, also showing that they've got the king as well. So what does all that mean? It means that if you're declarer in a situation like this, if we bring up the four hands, you'll see this is actually the layout on both hands here. And when a spade is played, you have a choice as declarer whether to, uh, if you, assuming you want to win this trick, whether to win it with a queen or win it with the king. And it turns out that it is more deceptive to win it with a king. If you win it with a king, West doesn't really know who has the, the other high honour. But if you win it with a queen, West should be able to work out that you as South also have the king. So how does that matter? Well, let's go on with the play of this. Let's suppose having played the queen, let's look at this from Declarer's point of view now. And I think as Declarer, you might well turn your attention to clubs here. Let's suppose you start with clubs and uh, suppose West wins the first club. Well, the way the play went on this, West has gained the lead, but West should be wary of continuing with the spade here because he knows that South has got the king, okay? If, if they played it differently, if they played the king earlier and hung on to the queen, West wouldn't be sure where the queen was. So this, this play was more deceptive, was, was more a better play by Declara because, um, sorry, um, the, the, the first play was, was, was better, playing the king because it hid the location of the queen. Playing this way, West should be able to figure out that South has got the king and may well decide not to continue with spades. What they might hope for is to get their partner on lead so that they can lead a spade back. If I click on the GIB button at this point, you can see that Declare can always make this, but they can make an over trick if West leads a spade. So West, realizing that South has got the king here, might well decide to play another suit, perhaps a diamond. And now it's a moment of decision time for Declarer, because if Declarer plays low here, hoping to win with the queen, they can actually be defeated on this contract. What would happen is that East could win the king and then should switch back to a spade, trapping the, uh, the king of spades. So Declare can still make this, but won't, won't make an over trick if they go up with the ace and then they can uh, take their clubs that they've set up and then their uh, hearts that they've uh, set up as well. And they, they will make their contract there um, but at the end, the opponents will take two spades, but would, would hold them to uh, nine tricks on that one. So this was um, this was an example of one where you need to think about the card you play as declarer and, and which card is is sort of most likely to hide information from the opponents. Do interrupt me if you're having a question about that. Let's have a look at this one. This is one um, that I've, I've done before, but I want to start with a bidding question here. Um, West has opened three clubs and it's gone pass, pass. And my poll question for you is, what do you think South should bid here? So have a little think and I'll launch a poll in a moment. And I'd like you to tell me what you think South should bid. Yeah, end the poll there. And the majority here have gone for goal. 50% went for four hearts, followed by three hearts, and followed by double. And yes, I agree with the four heart bidders here. Um, you have a fantastic hand here. And when you're competing over a preemptive bid, you should bid on the assumption that your partner has. Uh, a few points for you. About seven points is the normal rule of thumb. The point problem is here, if you bid just three hearts, you might have a much weaker hand. There are many hands where you'd like to bid over three clubs, um, but you don't necessarily want to go on to game. Um, but here, you just need a you know one or two useful cards from your partner. 
to make four hearts. I don't like bidding um, double there. I mean, my partner will not, not want to bid hearts here, and my hearts are so good that I don't really want to play anything else much, really. So um, it just it's just confusing the matter. I just would, would bid th uh, four hearts here, and that will end the auction. So let's have a look at how that might go. If you do bid four hearts, <coughs> the opponents start off with the ace of clubs. And you can see your partner's got a, a pretty sort of typical hand for you. They've got the king of diamonds, which is something. They've got the spades there, which is um, uh, quite a nice suit. But you should see that actually you're in danger of losing four tricks here because you're presumably going to lose two clubs and you might then also lose two diamonds. So you're not going to lose any spades or any hearts, but you might start off losing those four tricks. So it may well go like this. They take their ace of clubs, they take their king of clubs, and then they will shift to diamonds, presumably. And if you play your king, east takes the ace, and they can play another diamond, and they've taken the first four tricks. After this, if they play... Uh, whatever they play now, you're going to win that, claim the rest, but you'll be down one in four hearts. Was there anything you could have done about it? Well, this is a kind of situation, it's a bit of an old chestnut. When they lead the ace of clubs, you might normally play low here, but the thing that may mislead the opponents is if instead of playing low, if you play the queen. The Queen of Clubs is a useless card. It's never going to win a trick. And by playing the Queen, you're trying to uh, fool West into thinking that you started with a singleton. And they may think there's no point continuing with another club because you're going to rough it. And when they, uh, if they decide to shift to another suit, they might play a diamond, which although East has got the ace and can take the Queen as well, that's it. They can't take any more tricks after that. If they play another diamond, you south should rough, definitely rough high here. OK, and then all you're going to do is draw the trumps and then you've got all the uh, spades, which will provide uh, discard for the club. And played that way, you you'd make your 10 tricks here. So when when they play a club, um, you should realize you might uh, fool the opponents into thinking that you had a singleton and if you throw the queen away and and that may um, may cause them to, to find the wrong line. One important thing when you are uh, playing a queen in a situation like that, this is called false carding, deliberately not playing the lowest card, um, is to, to play it smoothly. Don't, um, you know, think about it for a long time. Uh, because that will tip off the opponents that maybe you were false carding. But, Can I ask you a question, Tony? Yes, Morris. Um, if after playing the queen on the first round, mm. you shuffle, moved your cards around as so though you only had three suits left, is that <laughs> against the rule? Is that against the rule? <laughs> yes or no? Um, I, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Um, I believe it would be um, considered Misleading. unethical. Yeah, I, I believe it would be considered unethical. Um, Does that yeah. mean it's against the rule? I think it could well be, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is an interesting question. I, yeah, I mean, doing doing something in a... It, it, it's sort of a bit similar to hesitating <laughs> when, you, when you have a singleton to play, okay. so... Obviously, this doesn't apply on real bridge because you can't shuffle your cards around. But uh, I may think about that. But I believe it would be considered unethical to um, mm -hmm. to do that because you're trying to mislead the opponents. Now you're allowed to mislead the opponents, but only by the card you play, not by you know some other way of misleading them. Uh, anyway, now I've never been asked that question before. I, I will um, I'll, I'll think about it, but I believe it is misleading. It would be considered un unethical. Um, let's, Tony, I have a question yes. with regard to uh, yeah. bidding on that. 
Yes. I know you said uh, we should go straight to four. I was debating in my mind whether I should go three or four, because when I looked at the hand, I could see five losers or four losers straight away. So I yeah. said I never, cannot make four uh, hearts. So that's why I was keen to bid three and leave it to my partner if she's got or yeah. three or four to put me on to four. Am I right there or not really? Uh, I'm just going to I'm just going to mute you because there's a, a background noise from you. Yeah. Um, let's mute everyone. Uh, well, the 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 problem with with just bidding three on this hand is that your partner should probably pass. Although, as it turns out, the defense can find the right defense to defeat you here. Um, so it's a much better idea when they are. Not not in just not a normal bidding, but in when you're competing against a preemptive bid. First of all, the preemptive bid is typically weak, doesn't have many points. And it, it makes sense to assume that on average your partner will have a few points um, because the preemptor's hand is uh, is weak. And the rule of thumb is to assume that they've got something like seven points or a couple of useful cards. And you can see they really don't need very much to uh, to make four hearts. They've got, um, you know, the, the king of diamonds and, and, and the queen of spades are possibly useful cards. So the problem with bidding three hearts is that your partner doesn't know whether you've got a hand like this that's almost good enough to bid four hearts or whether you're just straining to bid three hearts in order to um, to keep them out of the auction. So. If you use that guideline, which I recommend, assume your partner's got a couple of useful cards, then I think you would bid four hearts on this one. What about deceptive bidding, Tony? So going back to that hand, mm. supposing um, South over calls with three hearts, mm -hmm. West passes, mm. and North bids three no trumps, which <laughs> fools everybody to think he's got the ace of clubs. Mm, mm. Well, it would be sad if they ended up in three no trump, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, with the diamonds as they are, yes, it would be. Um, uh, I suppose a deceptive bid is what's sometimes called a psychic bid, yeah, um, where you make a deliberate misbid representing your hand with the with the intention of confusing the opponents, um, and I think, yeah. And that that can work. I, I mean, I don't I don't particularly like doing it. It creates a lot of ill feeling when it happens, oh, but it's not against God, the rules. Right. <laughs> it's not against the rules to make a deceptive bid. But when you you know if you if you if you deliberately miss bid, the I, the rule is that you must be misleading your partner as well as the opponents. So so you know if you have a partner who regularly makes uh, psychic bids you might get into the habit of realizing oh that's probably another psychic bid um uh made by my partner so that's not allowed um so if you do want to make psychic bids you know just make them very occasionally but um especially against less experienced players uh it's sort of yeah. frowned upon but it, it is not illegal it, isn't the rule that if you, you can only make one once in a that's tournament. a useful guideline i think yes yeah Mm. I mean, I've only made about two psychic bids in my life, I believe. So <laughs> let's have a look at this hand here. And um, let's have a look at this from um, the defence's point of view. It went one spade, your partner overcalled two clubs, two spades, and then they bid four spades. And your partner starts off with the ace of clubs. And down comes dummy. And I've got the... Next, and the final poll of the evening for you, which is which club are you going to play here? The Jack, the 10, or the 5? Okay, let me uh, share the results with you. And uh, pretty even result. 43% um, said the 10. 35% said the jack and 22% said the five. Well, my, uh, sorry, let me find the right one. My um, 
thought is that when your partner leads the ace against a suit contract, they should have the king. They should have the, and you should signal on that basis. They may have the ace and the king. They might also have the queen, but they might not. And you should signal encouragement or discouragement on that basis. And here, because you do not have the queen, you should probably signal discouragement. You should not encourage by playing the jack or the 10. You should really discourage here because you've got three cards in the suit and you don't have the queen. So I think most of you are wrong on this one. You should only be encouraging if you had the queen or if you had a double turn, so that you were going to be able to rough the third round. OK, so, yes, I think you should play the uh, the five there. And that's not saying, you know, you mustn't play clubs. It's saying I can't help you in clubs. So your partner wins that one. They carry on with the king. And they did have the queen, in fact. So they play that one. And you play your jack and declare a rough stat. So um, you've won two tricks. Declare has just got in. And let's suppose Declara starts off by drawing trumps. They take their ace, your queen drops. They play another spade and uh, you discard a diamond. And all the spades have now gone, but they keep playing spades. And what they're doing is trying to get you or your partner to discard something that will help them. So this is a common deceptive strategy, if you like to rattle off all your trumps and give the opponents problems discarding. So for now, I don't think we have too much of a problem. Let's discard a heart, let's say. And if they play another spade, let's discard a diamond. And we, we're now to the point where we, we've sort of got those two queens and we'd really like to um, not discard any, anything else. So if they leave a diamond, they take their king so the ace of diamonds is still out there. And they now play uh, another spade. And <clears throat> now you have to decide what to discard. And they've made life very difficult for you by playing off all those spades, because you'd like to keep that queen of hearts protected. Maybe that will make a trick. Um, and you also don't really want to discard a diamond. But given the choice, you may decide to discard a, a diamond. And if I bring up the four hands at this point, you can see that that turned out to be the wrong thing to do because what Declare will now do is they might try their cash their ace and king of hearts. Okay, the queen and jack are still out there. So they'll play another diamond and they can take that with the ace. And now because you and your partner have thrown off all your diamonds, the 10 of diamonds makes a trick and they will make um, 11 tricks altogether. So if you have a look at the um, hand from Declarer's point of view, you can see that Declarer's not going to lose any spades. They're not going to lose any hearts. They've got two clubs, which they're going to lose right at the beginning. And the only other loser they've got is the 10 of diamonds. And there's no legitimate way to make a trick for the Ten of Diamonds other than what Declarer just did, which was to run off all the trumps um, and then keep playing trumps. And then at the end, um, give East, it turns out, has difficulty knowing what to discard. Doesn't know whether they should be keeping the, uh, the, the three hearts or the three diamonds. And it turns out they should have thrown away the uh, the heart and kept the diamond and hold, held the Clara to 10 tricks there. So that was a deceptive play by De Clara in, in playing off all those um, spades like that. What, what De Clara shouldn't do on this hand is play it this way. So this is a, um, played in a similar way. Again, they've started off with three rounds of clubs. De Clara now draws trumps in two rounds. And some declarers on this hand will think, oh, maybe I should um, rough some hearts, which you can do. So if they switch to hearts, playing the ace king of hearts and another heart, 
you can rough that, but in doing so, all you've done is um, played less deceptively because you, you're basically telling the opponents that you don't have any more hearts and you've already roughed clubs. So both opponents should realize that the only other suit you have apart from trumps is the diamonds. So if you play now your spades here, East and West should have no difficulty hanging on to the right thing. And played that way, you will lose a diamond at the end, losing to the Queen of uh, Queen of Diamonds. So um, that was an example of, of not playing it deceptively, of, of roughing the hearts. It's an example where, you know, you're roughing in the hand with the long trumps and it doesn't gain you anything here. It does not gain you any extra tricks. And also it tips off the opponents about what you've got left in your hand. Do uh, stop me if you have any questions on that. And I want to include one hand here that was um, played. Um, I was dummy on this hand, um, but my partner played this one uh, very well. It was um, Susan Merrill played this hand uh, in five diamonds doubled. And let's just have a look at it. Um, she, she played this quite deceptively, I thought. So East here opens a spade, South bids two diamonds, West bid two spades. Um, it's not perfect for that, but you do have three spades and a sing singleton diamond. So that might be a, a good call there. It's only five points, but you know, count more with a singleton perhaps. Anyway, the bidding then continued three diamonds. And East jumped to four spades. Um, then it went pass, pass. And I, especially at this vulnerability, I thought maybe they're going to make four spades. So I bid five diamonds and East doubled. So uh, my partner was left playing this in five diamonds doubled. And let's have a look at it from her point of view. The opponents led a spade. And we can see we're not going to make five diamonds here because we got what are we going to lose two hearts i presume and i presume we're going to lose two spades so we'll probably just make nine tricks and might go down two so let's have a look at um how this was played they played the nine from dummy east played the queen and south here throws the jack of spades and this is the first part of a deceptive play they're sort of making east think that that's probably the only spade they've got. OK, so in any case, East won the queen and shifted to a heart, which I think they're probably going to do anyway. They took the ace. West gave an encouraging signal. So they played another heart and they've taken those two tricks. And now West is on lead and West here um, maybe also thought that Declarer uh, doesn't have any spades left. So they shifted to a club. So Declarer won that one. And now Declarer draws trumps with the king and then over to the ace. And now here's a second, what I think was a very good play by Declarer. She leads the spade, but she leads the 10 of spades, not the king. And if I bring up the four hands, you can see that when the 10 was played, East presumably thought, oh, they're going to rough this one and um, did not play the ace and the 10 won a trick so declare managed to sneak a trick there um with with a, a very good deceptive play after that um they roughed the last spade and cash of clubs and just went down one trick in five diamonds doubled um it can make four spades so five diamonds doubled would was a uh, uh, a good sacrifice rather than letting them make four spades. But I thought that was a pretty good deceptive play. Any other comments or questions on that? So well done, Susan. Um, and let's try this one now. This is a, a last one here. It's gone one no trump, three no trump. And the opponents lead a spade. So let's stop for a minute and count our top tricks. Well, we've got, um, we start off with one spade trick, but that lead actually guarantees us two spade tricks if we want. So that's two tricks there. Hearts, we've got 
four tricks. So that's a total of uh, six, although it requires a little bit of untangling, perhaps. And we've got one top trick in diamonds. Obviously, to make this contract, we're going to try to set up the diamonds and we'll probably try a diamond finesse. So let's see how it goes. Let's suppose um, East plays the jack and suppose we make the normal play of playing the queen. And then what we're going to do is what cross to dummy and play the diamond. So let's do that. Let's cross over to the ace, lead the queen of diamonds, and we try the finesse, which fails. And let's bring up the four hands at this point and look at it from West's point of view. West, remember you led a low spade, your partner played the jack and the queen one. So you know that. Declare is sitting there with the ace of spades. And you also know that Declare has just played the diamonds, and the diamonds are probably now set up. They're probably now established. So you might think, well, if I play a spade, I'll just knock out the ace, but Declare is going to be able to um, you know, make the contract now with the, with the diamonds and the hearts that they've got. So because you know that Declare has got the uh, ace here, you might decide to do something else. And it turns out that you can defeat this contract now if you play um, a club. If you lead a club here, the jack of clubs, and if you're lucky, your partner's got a good holding in clubs, and you can actually um, take the club tricks, and your partner will defeat the contract now with the last club. Declare will now gain the lead and will make eight tricks there. So was there any way to make this? Was there any, any, any way you could have made this? Well, just imagine when they lead a spade, um, you, you may think it's obvious that you should win this one with a queen, but you could make a deceptive play here, which is playing the ace. And if you play the ace, West will surely think that their partner must have the queen. OK, why would you be playing the ace if you have the ace and the queen? So thinking ahead, you can realize that later on, West is going to get in with the uh, their diamonds if they have the king of diamonds and they will assume that their partner's got the um, queen. So the deceptive play here is to play the ace. Now you're going to play it as before, cross over to the ace. Try the diamond finesse, which fails. And West will confidently play another spade, assuming their partner's got the queen, and then will be mortified to see you win it. And now you can take the rest of your tricks. You can take your hearts, your diamonds, cross back to take the remaining diamonds, and you can make uh, 10 tricks, I think, there. OK, so this was a, a, a very tricky one. Um, but it is possible to mislead West um, by, by playing the ace instead of the queen there. Any comments or questions on that? Okay, we'll, we'll, end, we'll end, the, end the session there. I hope you found that um, interesting. And um, we'll, uh, we'll start the game at 7.30.